Now you've messed me up. What did I do? Hey everybody, Fat Bird Finds here. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Laura and I'm Mary Beth and today we are going to do a little haul video from last week's video when we went through the garage. So we have got everything kind of cleaned up. Laura has looked into some of the things that we found last week and we're going to give you guys a little bit more information about the stuff that we found. A little bit. A little bit of information. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you see on the table right now are some of the less valuable items that we picked up last week. Right, unless there's just a surprise here, you know, of course, that we don't know about or something. But these are a few things. I've looked up some other things that we have a little bit more back background information on. These things, I just kind of know just what they are and about what they might bring, I think. Okay, so right off the bat, I mean, do we have two pieces of Vaseline glass here? Well, we don't have our black light. We still, we still have got to buy the black light, folks. But this one I don't think is going to be. Okay. But this one might be. But we'll just have to, uh, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Okay. But this is just uh, some late depression glass. That's pears in the bottom. We kind of showed it in the garage video. And um, I think we said that maybe it might be like a sweet pear pattern. Or maybe something it's an like avocado. That. <laughs> you think so? No, I don't think it's an avocado. <laughs> Okay, but I think it's like a candy dish. Okay. It's definitely not an avocado dish. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, it's probably worth 20 bucks or so. Awesome. We also have a couple of baskets on the table. Um, Laura said in last week's video that she thought this was an egg basket, but we're not sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. We're not really egg spurts <laughs> on egg baskets. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so seriously though, if you guys know about baskets, um, let us know in the comments below what you think about these and, and if they're valuable and maybe what we can expect to make off those. Right. Anything else that you want to talk about on this table before we move on? Um, these are, uh, these are cruets. Um, this is a pretty little clear glass one, um, with a handle. So that would have been for, uh, vinegar and this was probably uh, there's also cruet sets and there would be like ones with a handle that you would pour but there would be other ones with no handle so this would be cool if somebody was trying to finish out a set a lot of times they were in like a silver holder oh. and there would be like four for the different um items um so these really probably only about 15 20 dollars a piece probably they're old though and um oh this <laughs> you know uh I talked about it in the video mm -hmm. in the garage and I said that maybe you sweep the crumbs, you know, off the table. Right. Well, my mom set me straight on that one. You were wrong. I was wrong. Laura I, was wrong. But I was close. But you call this, this is, it looks like the, the things I was talking about does look like that, but it came with a little brush and the, usually they were silver. Okay. So this is a silent butler and real popular in the 50s you know everybody smoked in the 50s and so the hostess would run around with this and empty the cigarette butts and the ashtrays and stuff in there to get them out of the way and you know a silent butler silent butler <laughs> that's my favorite term of the day <laughs> it's pretty good i love that so the last couple of things on the table include this little blue uh, drug company medicine vial. It says Baltimore on the bottom. This is really cute. Again, not worth a whole lot, but it's a really cute piece that we'll probably put up on eBay just to see. And then this little master salt that <laughs> Laura talked about last week in the video. So apparently this is to refill your little um, individual place setting salt and pepper shakers. Is I wish right? we, yes, I wish we had the little ones to go with him, <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. So again, first lot, um, not super valuable stuff, but stuff that we did want to show you and let's go on to the next part of the video. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, Laura. So before we move on to some of the stuff behind us, I do want to give a little bitty shout out to this quilt 
So this quilt was hanging in the garage last week and mm -hmm. we didn't want to leave it behind. So quilts are kind of near and dear to us because actually Laura and I used to work for the American Quilter Society and Nikki too. Nikki's back there. She used to work there too. That's exactly how Laura and I met. Um, right. We worked together at the American Quilter Society. So we used to go to quilt shows, work quilt shows. So we know a little bit about quilts, just enough really to be dangerous. <laughs> but this quilt is really pretty. It's definitely vintage. We were um, inspecting it. It is machine stitched, but it's absolutely hand quilted. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty. Um, the pattern is not exact. So as you can see, like these strips, this one's really wide. This one is um, really narrow. So it's, it's not a definite pattern, but it's really pretty. It's in really good condition. It doesn't look like it's really been used that much at all. No, I, I went ahead and washed it because it had been in that garage. I mean, um, I mean, I washed it on Delicate or whatever, but it had to be washed because it, it was just full of dust and everything. But I think it did really well. I was just trying to, you know, I was hoping that it would come out, come out good. Um, but these fabrics, I think, are really cool because I think they're really 60s looking. Yeah, you know? they're very retro. Mm -hmm. So, Laura, is this something that you're going to keep for yourself or do you think that you're going to put this on eBay? Um, I don't know. I, we might hang on to it for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good quilt. So, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we'll just hang on to this one. Awesome. All right, so let's keep going. So something else that there were a ton of in that garage were books. And, again, I know we said this in the last video. Laura and I are not in the book business, but we just could not bear to leave all those books behind so we did save a few that we have on the table we rescued them because i mean i know you guys you saw tons and tons of books and i hate it for people that are book lovers that are just going oh my gosh all those books but they were mostly all water damaged yeah yeah, yeah. it was a shame but it, it happens but we were able to save a few and i think laura has looked up a little bit about some of these i did i actually studied good job <laughs> okay so Bear with me because I've got a couple of little notes. Um, okay, I'll save my favorite one here and just talk about a couple of these. Okay. Um, look how pretty this one is. I think that is gorgeous. <laughs> Nikki might be able to pronounce it for me. I didn't look up the pronunciation. It's French. Um, but you can see the title right there. How do you pronounce and that, Nikki? Flagelon? <laughs> That's better than I can do. Yeah. Better than, than I can do. And look at that Art Deco style with the bees and everything. It's really that beautiful? Cool. So um, I decided to look it up. And it's actually um, listed on eBay. Several copies. Like there's an $85 copy. And um, so anywhere from $85 to $30 in there. So I think that's kind of a cool find. That's more than I thought it would be. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, it is, um, it's a play. It's a French play about, based on the life of Napoleon II. I learned that too. So, wow, but job. I think it's gorgeous. I yeah. just love that cover. Love it. Um, and then those are pretty. These are not all that valuable. Either one of those, probably only in the $15 to $20 range. Okay. Uh, that one you've got is called Evangeline. It's by Longfellow. Okay. I thought that would be valuable. See, what do I know until you look something up? I thought that one would be more valuable. It's only $15 to $20. We also picked up this cute little um, book holder stand that you can display your open books in. And it's not super valuable, but it's really cute. And it's hand carved. And we couldn't really leave that behind either. Mm -hmm. so I think I'm, Nikki's got her eye on that one. I think so too. I'm glad that we that we took that with us. Okay, and then the one you've got there in your hand, mm -hmm. also $15 to $20. It's actually from 1860. Wow. And um, it's the poetical works of Thomas More. I feel like I should have gloves on. I know, right? <laughs> but, you know, books are very... They're just hard to maintain, you know, the antique books. You have to really be serious and have a really good environment, almost like... It's kind of like fine wines or something like that. You know, you've got to have a place yeah. to keep them and everything to keep to keep the pages in good condition. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, but that one's cute. And then these um, are just two out of a set. Um, what does it say? The History of France. Aren't those pretty? So anyway, those are ancient. Um, and I looked those up. 
if we had the set of six, they're worth like five hundred dollars. <laughs> I know, maybe we should have looked harder. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> for the rest of them. Um, but anyway, they're leather bound, and so, I mean, I would expect to get $35, $40 a piece out of them. Okay. Um, they have really pretty engravings on the inside, you know, and so that's kind of part of their value. Okay, so last in all these books is my favorite one. Mm -hmm. I think it's the prettiest one. Um, it's got this really pretty leather uh, wow. cover. And everything in the gilded gilted edges but actually it looks fancy but it's a cookbook a, is it really mm -hmm. is it called to serve man do you know what show that's from it's a cookbook <laughs> oh the twilight zone the twilight zone thanks dickie <laughs> that was oh, great yeah i never got that <laughs> but look at this look at the cool um just, I, would, I just want to open up a few of the pages um, to see these cool 50s pictures. And um, here, you can find a picture and I'll look at my notes here. I looked it up. It's 1958. Really? It looks older than and that. Really, the only damage is the covers. Just be careful opening it up okay. because they've gotten wet, like I said. But um, there were some listed for $99. Really? So, I mean, I would expect that that's probably pristine condition or something, but I bet, I mean, I bet as is it's worth $50, $60. I mean, it's just so classic, the, the 50s, you know, serving ideas and pictures, and I just love it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm glad that we were able to save some of the books, so I'm glad it wasn't a total, a total loss. Yeah, me too. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay. Shall we toast? Oh boy, <laughs> if only we had something in our glasses. <laughs> you know, that would be a great idea. Yeah, we really need to have some wine on this channel. Yeah, I think next time we're gonna, you know, have a glass of wine while we do this. Hopefully it's not that wine that we found in the garage last week. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so the first thing we wanna talk about on this uh, little spread are these really pretty amber glasses. And hopefully you can see the rest of them behind us. It's a set of, is it eight, six, eight? Yes, eight. Um, yes, and here um, I haven't done all my homework. I just know a couple of things about these and maybe you guys can help us out here as well. Um, I'll kind of hold one up closer and you can kind of see the light come through it. But anyway, that's an oak leaf pattern, mm -hmm. I think. And of course it's just etched on there. And um, I was talking about it with mom. We, we were, she was talking about it might be Libby because Libby glass company was famous for their oak leaf pattern hmm. but um we think they might be a little bit nicer than that because libby was kind of an everyday kind of a, a glass company okay so um maybe somebody else can help us out these um not a lot of value because i think they were used a lot oh. and there's little chips you know um doesn't bother me um i think some of us maybe should keep this set and here's something interesting that I'm just now seeing. It looks like they're not all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Like this one is just a little bit thicker on the base than this one. Mm -hmm. So, but they're, again, they're super pretty. I really like them. Yeah, I love those. Awesome. Vaseline glass or not. <laughs> again, we're going to have to have the black light. There's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> but possibly, you know, these could possibly be the Vaseline glass. Um, little toothpick holders. They're probably shot glasses. <laughs> That's a big shot. <laughs> we don't want to drink like that on air. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Okay, so you know, I'm gonna say probably fifteen, twenty dollars a piece, maybe on those. Really? Yeah, I think so. That's better than I thought. Mm -hmm. And we've also got this green bell pepper. It's a pepper. It's not a pepper. It's a pepper. You saw this last week in the video. This is definitely a green tomato. Just a little Christmas ornament. It's cute. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I was making fun of myself. It's a tomato. She didn't know I'll, it was I'll a tomato. I'll give you that one. <laughs> so how about this one? What is this? Okay, this is, um, isn't this pretty? It's a butter dish, right? I don't know. So back in the day when they people made their own butter, turned the butter out, put it in a butter mold, so it came out, you know, in like one pound. A butter uh, mold? 
Yeah, you've never seen a butter mold either? I don't think so. Oh, those are really cool. You, they turned the butter up and they poured it in these molds and then so when it came out it was decorative. You know, there was like a stamp in the top of it. Really? Yeah. That's pretty fancy. So it'd be pretty on your table. Interesting. And then also they had these dishes. Of course, you know, you can't leave the butter out uncovered. And so they had their fancy little butter dishes. Nice. Now, um, you know, we talk about all the time prices are different in, in different eras. This has actually been way more valuable. Um, probably 20 years ago, they were probably bringing something like $65 or so. Can't get that for them now, but probably $30, $35. Okay, cool. I think it's pretty. What about this little book here? Okay, so these two pieces go together. Okay. And I did do some research on these because I thought it was interesting. So these aren't old. Um, it's modern. A little modern book and it's called The Subjects of Early Russian Icons. Okay. And so it's cool. It's got pictures um, and illustrations. And I thought, hey, it looks kind of like that too. So um, I think they were bought together. And the person that um, had all these things, they, there was, they were water damaged, but there were all kinds of books, Russian history books and everything. Um, so I guess they were just a collector of those kind of things as well. But anyway, this book brings about, let me look at my notes. 10 to $20. Okay. Um, but this is the interesting part because this kind of goes with it. Um, but this is actually sterling silver. Really? Yeah. It's marked on the back. Made in Italy. See oh that? yeah, I see that. And do you see the little 925? Yes. So all of my um, jewelry buddies out there uh, know that the 925 means that it's sterling. Mm. Yep. And so this is actually quite valuable. So this probably would bring somewhere around $65. Really? Yeah. No kidding. So that's cool. Very cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. Good research, Laura. Yeah, I thought that was really pretty and really interesting. Way to go. And I think that we'll put them together, don't you? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. I think we'll lock those up together. And I bet, you know, maybe $75 or so. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well done. Hey. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Okay. Okay, so as we were leaving the garage last week, we spotted these boxes. And we did not get them on video last week, but we do have them for the video this week. And they are carousel slide trays, full, just crammed full of pictures. Yeah, you really spotted these. And um, I didn't think much about it, but I'm, I'm getting more and more excited as every time we talk about them, I'm like, I wanna see them. Yeah, so we have no idea what pictures are on these. We dug a little bit further and we found uh, this original box, uh, the original packaging for this um, carousel slide projector. So we've got the projector, we've got everything that, that goes with it. It's all there. So we've got the equipment to uh, to put this together and to look at these pictures. Yeah, I thought we didn't have the cord and stuff, but I think you found it hidden away, didn't you? Yeah, it's like um, inside here. There's like a little uh, slide door that comes out and the and the cord is, is stuck up in there. So I think we've got like a whole evening of fun ahead of us with this. We'll need our wine glasses and our wine for that with Definitely. some popcorn. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I have no idea. Obviously, I'm not the expert, Laura is, but I have no idea how valuable these types of things are that pictures that belong to somebody else. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we talked about in the in the other video, we talked about the fact that this person that passed away um, did not have any family right. um, that wanted to come claim anything or that we know of. Um, so, it's sad, but... I feel like we're rescuing it yeah. <laughs> from the junk heap, you know? And I think I'm reading right here. I put my glasses on. Um, Christmas 1969. Wow. That's got to be good, right? Yeah, that's got to be really good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this will be really cool to look at. Um, again, if, if you guys are interested or know anybody who's interested in old pictures, old carousel trays, you know, let us know. This stuff would be so heavy to ship. But, you know, maybe that's a possibility in the future. Yeah, you and I were talking about it. You guys can maybe add to this in the comments. Um, I'm pretty sure this would go media mail, though, mm. which is set up by USPS for things like books and um, heavier things that makes it a little bit more reasonable to ship. Does a projector go media mail? I kind of think so. 
That would be good. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. I, but that, that would be my guess. Okay. So we definitely wanted to show you this stuff. And again, these are just crammed full of pictures. We've got six boxes total of uh, carousels with, with pictures in them. So this is Cape Cod, you know, 1973, 1974. Very cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Love it. They've also got little price tags on the outside, like $4.95. Those look like 70s for sure. Yeah. Stone's Drug Store. I don't know what that is. So very cool stuff. We just couldn't leave it there. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Now what? Okay. So we've got a few more things here that we've talked about. I did do my research on the tomato pot because you made <laughs> it's so tomato much. tomato wear. It is tomato wear. And you think, I know you thought that's not a real thing. <laughs> yeah, I so. definitely thought you made that up. So, I looked it up. Okay. Tomato wear is a thing. Thousands of dollars. <laughs> no, don't ruin it. It's not thousands of dollars, but it is a thing. Tomato wear is a thing. Okay. Um, you might hold up the, hold onto that and hold up the bottom. You can see that nice uh, Made in Japan sticker. I'll show a close up of it. Oh, okay. Um, so, it is made in Japan. It's by the UCAGCO. So that's, that's what it says on the sticker. And it stands for United China and Glass Company. Okay. Okay, so they were a glass company here in the United States. And they, after World War II, began to accept imports from Japan. So this, so, you know, we can date that to the 50s or 60s. Okay. Um, so it is called Tomato Wear. And it sells in the $40 to $60 range. Really? Yes. Great. Isn't that great? That is great. I'm so pleased. <laughs> that sounds really good. Yes. I was very happy to find out all that information for you. I, I, I'm just baffled. <laughs> I just can't imagine anybody in, in a store being like, you know what? I'm going to get that and put that in my kitchen. Really? It's adorable. Why would you not want that? I don't really like tomatoes. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe so. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a really good one. I like that. I'm Thanks. glad that that's worth that. Very Thanks. cool. And this, this is so pretty. Um, I couldn't resist showing it because it is so pretty. Um, at first I said it was a cake stand, but it's not. Because look, it's, it's very deep. Yes, it's too deep for a cake. Um, so it's a fruit bowl. Ah. But it's a super fancy one. It's French. It was with all the Limoges, you know, that was stacked up in the garage that mm -hmm. we didn't end up taking with us. Um, my mom did rescue that Limoges, though, so if anybody out there is like, oh, my God, did you let that go? We didn't. Um, my but... Limoges! <laughs> That's from uh, Out of Africa. Out of Africa! Oh, Good one, Nikki. I would have never got that yeah. one. <laughs> my Limoges! Oh, I can't wait to use that again. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on, sorry, for just a second. And it does have um, nice French marks on the bottom. Um, H-E-B-E-R-T, not Hebert probably. It's probably Hebert or something like that in French. But I looked everywhere, and I'm not really familiar with that mark. So if anybody out there knows anything about it, you could uh, help us out and, and uh, let us know what you think. I couldn't really find much about it. It's got a little mark here on it, too. I think it's monogrammed. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'll show close-ups of all that for you guys. But it's, it's a very pretty piece. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would expect that to be worth $50 or $60 at least. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last two things on the table are a couple of really creepy Santa Clauses. Yeah, they're kind of creepy. <laughs> but you know, our uh, friends out there, they like the creepy. Yeah, that's fine. That's all good. I like creepy things. How about him? Yeah, he is super creepy, right? <laughs> the, really, the only thing I know to say about him is I think um, all this candy canes and things like that made with the pipe cleaners or chenille stems, whatever you want to call them, um, is kind of popular now and it kind of shows their age. And honestly, I couldn't tell you how old this is. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it's from the 80s and it's made to look older than that. Um, that's kind of my guess. 
but um he's an oldie though for sure he's got like some terracotta or something oh no on the bottom <laughs> he almost lost his basket yikes these are the ones that we held up and said we thought uh Ashley Rose might like. Well, only because she looks at so much Christmas stuff in her mm -hmm. videos and she's crazy about it. You know who else? Misty might like these. Okay. As well. That's cool. So, Misty, tell us what you think about this, especially this little guy. And look, see, he's made out of the chenille stems too. Um, at some point, the, he was $33. <laughs> <laughs> he's somewhere. got a price tag on the bottom. Yeah, somewhere in somebody else's uh, shop. So, I think if we just. I think it just needs just a little bit of TLC. Like we might glue a couple of these little candles, but I think that's adorable. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Okay, so here's a few more things before we get to the very end. Um, how about this, Laura? Is it a rug? Yes. Isn't this cute? It's a hand-hooked rug. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there's people that really collect these and um, are totally into these. There's it's bordered on the back with a felt, mm -hmm. you know, to make a nice um, edge. And so, yeah, it's just a throw rug, but I love that. Look yeah. At that. Look at that pretty pattern. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. So we had it up here on the, on the hutch where, so you guys could look at it and stuff while we were talking, but, um, but it is a rug. I like that. Very cool. Uh, How about that? Is it worth anything? I think it is, but to be honest, I'm, Still not sure about that. That's okay. I haven't found a bunch of comps for that. If anybody wants to put their two cents worth in about the value of that, go right ahead. We've asked you guys for a lot of help. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? We've got like, we've got really nice things that's kind of hard to value. We're very dependent on our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so we've also got a couple of really pretty uh, wooden boxes. Yeah, this, this is your style, right? I think you really like these. I do. I like these a lot. Um, and they are adorable, and they're definitely vintage. They were probably, you know, probably 50s, probably 60s. Um, this one might be a cedar. Yeah, and this one has a really cute little lock and key that was in the inside. I really like that. Now, surprisingly, they are not all that valuable. I was looking them up, and they're... They don't sell for much more than like the $20 range, which I was surprised. Yeah, that's a shame. But if you like that, then you should keep it because especially this one, that's adorable. Yeah. I don't know. I like them both. I really like these um, handles on the outside. Very, very, very pretty. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. This one's just a tiny bit damaged here on the corner, but it's still really cool as well. Is it cedar? Yes, I think it is. I think it is too. Mm-hmm. So the last thing on this uh, little table spread that we want to talk about are these cute little tea towels that we talked about so much in our in our last video. These are one of the my favorite things that we found out of the garage. I think that is so cute, and it's just funny. I never can predict with you what your favorite thing's gonna be. Who would have thought that a tea towel with some embroidery on there with the days of the week? And <laughs> kitties doing chores is gonna be your thing. Do I not look like a kitties doing chores kind of gal? I don't think so. <laughs> You're kind of right. <laughs> You've got an Alice in Chains shirt on. <laughs> I love Alice in Chains. I know, but I mean, they don't really go with kitty. I also love this kitty going out on Thursday. She's going out. <laughs> she is going out. So yeah, so how much are those worth, Laura? So surprisingly enough, um, sorry you guys, my dog. Um, <laughs> Surprisingly enough, these were these had the most sold comps on them when I was looking up stuff, and um, they sell consistently in the forty dollar range. Hey, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so I would expect them to sell probably quickly. Very cool. Okay, so let's move on to the the last things on our list. Okay. Whew. Okay, so we're down to the last two things. We saved the best for last. We did, as always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so what do you have here, Laura? Okay, so first of all. We had the little Dresden wreath, mm -hmm. and um, we had it as a teaser, you know, at the beginning of the video, right? Um, last time, but these are very collectible uh, right now, and um, it's a good time to sell them. They're bringing top dollar, I think. Um, they were made in the '80s, so they're not, you know, antique or anything, but they're so cool. They have all the little holidays, and I'm sure you're gonna put a close up. I will. And um, they come in all different sizes. This is just a little small one, seven inches, but they, they make 
they made big ones too and they made them out of this is brass and it was pressed into the old antique candy molds love that yeah and they're called dresden dresden wreaths or petit choix which is french wow. <laughs> for little things that's cute yes so they're called by either thing you'll see those are the words that you usually put the keywords that you put in ebay because nobody really knows they're not marked so they could be either one gotcha yeah so um i'll put my glasses on here i'll let you look at that for a second and i'll tell you how much uh comps are on that yeah i love this so much it's so cute the idea was and and they're they're easy to break off they're kind of fragile they're right. just soldered on you know this brass is just soldered onto the wreath but you were supposed to weave greenery yes in amongst all the little goodies and so um there are sold comps for 50 or 60 dollars for the small ones for the small ones wow mm -hmm. the big ones bring 200 three hundred dollars that's fabulous right so um i think um you know just taking advice from people that have been on ebay for a while and um we always put a little bit more just start off a little bit higher so right. that you can take a best offer or sure. just kind of leave, leave, leave a little wiggle room so really i think we should probably start that at about 79 dollars and see what happens okay let's do it okay awesome okay best for last in true fat bird fashion <laughs> this one is really good it is good i'm excited about this one okay laura so tell us all about it all right this is a crazy quilt so for any of you guys um you know quilt lovers or you're out shopping for text vintage um textiles and things like that this is kind of the major well, find to the, be looking for i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this is not even vintage i'm gonna say this is antique you're right you're right yeah. I, I throw the vintage word around a lot but you're right because um crazy quilts they were all the rage in the late 1800s and early 1900s right and um I don't know I just feel like this is the real deal I just feel like it's an old one I feel like you're right I mean I'm gonna put detail shots um, in of the stitching on this quilt um, it's full of velvet and silk and the stitches are just gorgeous they're so pretty they're so intricate this is really nice it's really thick and heavy this yeah this is absolutely antique without a doubt so you know um they used to have crazy quilt parties or tea parties and it was it was a fad it was a hobby and people sat around and um showed each other they were showing off you know the different stitches that they could do um the different pieces of silk and fabrics that they had found and collected i mean it was you know it was a true hobby for people right you know, in that time so um and then they were usually this size you know nobody did i don't know they did do some full-size quilts but a lot of times they were this size and they called them lap robes and so lap robes yeah in the parlor if it's cold you know and, dra and drafty in their big you know in, the <laughs> in their big colonel with mustard the with the wrench in the parlor are you making fun of parlor they definitely had that's what they were i love that word I wish I had a parlor. But they really were parlors. I believe you. I'm just saying, I really wish you, I had one. You have to be in a parlor to have a crazy quilt party. I guess I can't have one. <laughs> so, Laura, I'm sure that you have researched and done your homework to figure out how much these crazy quilts are worth. Yes. Well, I tried. And I did do a lot of research. Um, but... As you can imagine, it's not the same, you know, to value something like this is more difficult than to value a piece of glassware that, you know, that you find over and over again. It's the same piece of glass, the same size, the same sticker or the same mark, and that's easier to value. Um, so this, these are more difficult. Um, it just depends kind of, you've heard of being in the right place at the right time, you know, right. collectors who you run into that really wants the piece. Um, but I'm excited about this piece. I would, 
I would say it would be at least worth $300 or so. I think $300 is, is pretty fair on this piece. There are a few minor condition issues. So as we said before, uh, the quilt is full of velvet and silk. And so the silk, as you can imagine, is very um, fragile. And it, it's the first thing to kind of give way. So there are a few pieces um, on the quilt where the silk um, is torn a little bit. If these silk pieces were fully intact, there's no telling how much this yeah, would be worth. And that's another, that's another telltale sign of the age too, because I mean, that is totally age. It's not usage right. because none of these other pieces are tearing up like that. It's just the age of the silk. It's exactly. just, it just won't last. Yep. And of course, thank goodness it's backed with other fabric you know, because it needed the other fabrics to stabilize it and hold the stitches. Right. So there is something there. Yeah, it's but, not holes. It's just, you know, you can kind of see through it in places. But, I mean, my gosh, beautiful, incredible, rare find, I think. Yeah, that, this one's a lot of fun. Yes. I love this. Yeah. And, oh, look. Like, look at that big pansy. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? It is. So good. And that fabric, it's just... It's supposed to look like grass or something yeah in there. it's just so many cool things on this quilt again i'm going to show close-ups and uh show you guys lots of pieces of this mm -hmm. so that you can see it and enjoy it so yeah this is really cool so let's clear off our table and sign out of here all right let's do it so guys thank you so much for coming along with us on this little haul adventure if you liked this video be sure to give us a big thumbs up leave us a comment we really appreciate and love reading your comments and responding to those and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We really, really appreciate that. So stay tuned to see what Fat Bird finds next. See you next time.